I've been cleaning on this thing a good long while. I uh, ran carburetor cleaner, or not carburetor cleaner, brake clean uh, through all of the passages in and out and all that. We've got a little bit of surface rust down here in the bore. I went and picked up a, a brake caliper hone, and we're going to see if we can't clean up the inside of the bore on this old jack here. My electric drill is in the house. I like this one better anyway because it makes a cool sound. The instructions say never operate this outside of the cylinder bore. Huh. Okay, whatever. Let's get ourselves a little, uh, a little of the old uh, MMO down in there. All right, it goes nothing. Well, let's wipe it out and see what we look like here. All right, it's looking pretty good at that dark spot right there is where the uh, that little bit of surface rust was. I think this is going to clean up real nice, uh, to be honest with you. Yeah, I think that'll give us a nice surface for this rebuild. All right, I'm going to do it a little more, and then we'll uh, move on to something else. All right, after a little further inspection, uh, I put some... Um, mystery oil down in the bore there to keep it from rusting any further. I'm going to get in here with a some emery cloth. I was reading the instructions on the uh, the, the parts website and uh, you can get some emery cloth on a long rod, put it on a drill and hone this surface a lot finer. It looks really good now because it's got oil all over it but I'd, I'd like to get it a lot smoother so we're going to do a little more work on that all right, I believe we've got everything cleaned up pretty nicely. So I've got uh, these parts either soda blasted or just uh, cleaned up with the wire wheel. We've got this guy blown out with uh, carburetor cleaner and air. All of the passages have been done as well. This is the uh, universal joint. I did a soda blast on that. Cleaned that up pretty well. Here's your pump piston. I still haven't removed the old original O-rings yet because I'm going to do that as I rebuild it so I can do it in the proper order. A few odds and ends over here that we'll reuse some ball valves and things like that. Let's go ahead and get started rebuilding the hydraulic unit. Hydraulic jack oil. There we go. I just want to uh, coat that real good with the hydraulic jack oil and uh, get some on these parts as well so up the neck up first is the uh, the steel spacer that goes on like that up next is this uh, i'm going to call it a wiper let's just call it a wiper shall we then we have the seal which i believe is called a u seal that guy right there and We'll get a little oil on that as well. There we go. Man, that fits up. That fits real nice. It's nice and tight, by the way. Don't mind the thunder. All right, I like that. Okay. Uh, and we'll uh, get a little jack oil down in the in the cylinder there. We don't want too much, it'll just run out the empty holes there. So let's get this guy down in there. Ow. And all right, we got bottomed out there, so let's move on. All right, next thing we're gonna do is put the new seal in the gland nut, which I believe is what this is called. There's a leather wiper in this same slot uh, as the rubber seal. The kit did not come with a new leather wiper. And I recall reading somewhere these could be reused. So I'm going to continue to reuse this. It may come back to bite me, but that's what I'm going to do. This goes on the bottom and the leather wiper is towards the top. So need to keep that in mind. Let's see how well this is going to work. I guess we'll just... Cram it in there. Is 
It's a little awkward, but it's going in. Okay, yep. Got to make sure we get it under the leather wiper. Probably should have installed it from the other end. That probably would have been easier. All right, twisted is not good. We're going to need to fix that. All right. I don't want to put a metal object in there to fix that, but I may have no choice. All right, we got it straightened out. It was just a little twist in one section, and you just be real gentle with it. And uh, we got the, as you can see, the seal is below the leather wiper. So we've got that in place. We're going to reinstall the outside shell next. So a little information here. At the factory, this was a metal to metal mating surface, as well as where the gland nut meets the top. So at the factory in the 70s, whenever this thing was made, or 60s, they didn't need O-rings or sealant in, in here because the mating surfaces were nice and square. And this nut is on here at 300 foot pounds. So it's sealed up. However, since we're doing a rebuild, and time has a way of making things pitted and not so square, we're gonna use some sealant. And that is according to the instructions that I obtained from the uh, Lazar's website. But, and I'll put the link in the, in the description below. A wealth of information on that site with regards to hydraulic jacks. So I, uh, I highly recommend it. But we have these ports right here. We don't want to get too much sealant to block that port, right? So you want to keep that in mind. Matter of fact, I'm not really sure how much to use. We're going to wing it. All right, let's clean up our excess. I want to get the excess from the inside. I don't really care about the stuff on the outside. There was some sealant on the bottom of this and on this gland nut when I took this jack apart. Uh, since the factory did not use sealant, that tells me that this jack has been rebuilt once before. won't work. With the piston in place, our fancy tool won't work. Awesome. I designed that with the piston removed. That's a, definitely a unique tool to be only used in very specific circumstances. All right, we're back. A little modification to our original tool to accommodate the tip of the piston and it's uh, the very tip where the cotter pin goes in and the breadth of the piston here. So, uh, and then these top edges here are what grab in the gland nut to tighten or loosen it. All right, so let's get this guy tightened up. Where's my socket? All right, we had to get our 15 16 inch socket. No, I don't have a 15 16 inch impact socket. And I'm not gonna go buy one. If I break it, I will. But until then, we're not gonna worry about it. We're gonna crank down on this as much as the impact will go. All right, let's reassemble the hydraulic unit for our jack. Now let's go over the various bits and pieces first. So this right-hand port is the pressure and suction valve. It consists of this plug, a copper crush washer, this uh, spacer, this larger check ball, a smaller spacer, and a, and a smaller check ball. The safety valve consists of this plug with a little slot in the end for adjustments, uh, a spring, a cup, and a a much smaller ball. It's, I think it's a one-eighth. This guy here, I made a mistake in removing it. I was supposed to count the number of turns that this was from fully seated. So I have been doing some reading and a good place to start on that is two turns out from full seat. And we'll see what that gets us. If uh, I need to make a further adjustment, I'll refrain from reinstalling this plug 
that covers up the left hand port. The left hand port is the pressure, or I'm sorry, is the uh, safety valve. So I'll refrain from putting this in there until after I get that fully uh, adjusted. So we'll see how well that works. Okay, so next up is the universal joint. It had this o ring here. I don't know where it goes. It came with the kit. I don't think it's needed for this particular model. The universal joint has a leather wiper. And again, it did, the kit did not give us a new one because these can be reused and it has an O-ring. So that goes here uh, and then this goes into the, uh, the port right below the universal joint. This is the little uh, valve that takes the pressure off your uh, jack. Okay, and this is uh, the little plate that covers over the uh, universal joint. Next up is the pump system. Uh, we've got this lower cup, spring, upper cup, and a cap that goes on. Uh, the C-clip for this is in my box over there. I was over, had it in a different location for safekeeping. And this is the, uh, the pump piston, I guess you'd call it. Uh, and then the uh, pin that holds it in place here. And here are the three new leather washers. And then here is a rubber O-ring. And the round side goes that way. The round side on all these goes that way. They have an oval shape to them, and the round side goes towards the, the piston. And then you have a washer and a lock nut to hold all of that in place. All right, let's put all this mess. Oh, yeah, one more thing. This is the bleeder. This is a new uh, bleeder cover. And the original cotter pin will reuse that. And these are the old parts back here. All of these are old parts, except for except for these. These there's a plug for that, and there's a plug for that, and I don't know what to do with those. I don't think they're needed for this particular model. All right, let's put this thing back together. We'll start with the safety valve. We're going to blow each port out before we put some parts in there, just to make sure things are clean. All right, in goes the check ball. For, well, I'm going to put a little, we'll put a little jack oil in there. Check ball, and then we have our little cup and our spring and the cap. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to run this down to full seat and then we're going to back up two turns. Let me put a little bit of a little bit of uh, lubricant in there on those threads. That's pretty tight. I'm going to call that full seat. All right, now we're going to go two full turns back out. One, two. It's kind of like setting the uh, idle mixture screws on a carburetor, really. Let's install the pressure and suction valve next. Give it a little lube. The smaller ball goes in first. And then the little spacer. We have this guy, which is the bigger one. And then we have that <laughs> thing above. And then we have the copper, the new copper crush washer. And then we have the plug. All right, so this uh, pressure and suction valve plug was in there pretty doggone tight. So we're going to Give it the impact driver and... All right, so we'll go ahead and reassemble the pump next. We'll take our piston and uh, get a little lube here. We'll insert it up into the housing first. Then we'll drive our retainer pin in place. We have it equidistant on both sides. Now we're gonna install these three new uh, leather wipers. Now right, we're gonna do these one at a time. I need something to drive that down in there with. All right, we've got ourselves a little socket. These, le these new leather uh, sliders have quite a bit of tension on them when they go down in the bore. You can't really use your fingers. Rubber O-ring, washer, and then finally the locking nut. should never use your socket extensions as a punch or a tool to pound stuff with. I learned that from another popular 
YouTube channel and uh, who sets a fine example for the rest of us. All right, so that's what I wanted. Now, we put this thing back together, hopefully. There's our top. And this comes down here like this. And you uh, you put this C-clip on there. And it, like magic, it just works and stuff. Oh, boy. This is going to be a challenge. All right, let's uh, get our pump down in the uh, jack there. This wasn't that tight. We're going to go with that. If it leaks, I'll tighten it some more. All right, now we have to get this spring on here and the cap. This is going to be so much fun. All right, there we have it, folks. I uh, just simply opened up a uh, crescent wrench and uh, as opposed to using your thumbs, which, you know, that hurts. And uh, just use the uh, wrench to put pressure here with your hand and get the clip on there and let it hang on there just so. And then we were able to crimp it down with some pliers. All right, let's move on and do the universal joint next. All right, let's put a little jack earl down in the hole there. We have one O-ring. goes in there. Thusly, we have one leather washer, which goes on top of the O-ring. And we have our little, little valve doohickey, which I dropped into place upside down. This is why you should store your screwdrivers in the presence of a magnet. You see these magnets I have up here on my screwdriver rack? These little neodymium magnets. I just stick them on the ends of my screwdrivers. It will magnetize your screwdrivers and make your life easier. All right, you rascal, you get down in there the way you're supposed to. There we go. Almost forgot the cover. Boy, thank goodness for fast forward on the video. You guys would be just pulling your hair out. No cross threading. I think that screw is just a piece of junk. It's just ready to be done. Let's move this out of our way. Those threads are just junk. I don't think I have a tap that small. I believe I do have a tap that small. And we are, in fact, going to tap it. Okay, not too tight. Good enough. Our parts are dwindling. We're about ready to put this thing back together. All right, let's put some uh, jack oil in this thing. Let's see how well this goes. All right, this is excitement a mile a minute, so I'm going to finish uh, filling this up, and then we'll uh, see about putting this thing back together. All right, we're going to put in this uh, right-hand plug over the uh, pressure valve. Easy peasy. We're going to leave this one out for now until I know this is adjusted properly. And uh, next step, we're going to put this hydraulic unit back in the jack and give this thing a test. All right, so since I did not record the number of turns for the bypass valve, I do set it to two turns out and then try to jack up the car and then it wouldn't go it wouldn't jack the car up it would just it would go up a little bit and come back down and so i had to i let everything down took the pressure off and i tweaked the uh, bypass screw just a little bit i went back an eighth of a turn so 
it's probably a turn and three quarters or maybe a little more out from the from full seat which is good enough to lift the car it's a 1.5 ton jack i don't ever intend on lifting anything heavier than 3,000 pounds uh, the back corner of this car for example here we are seems to be working just fine took me a little while to get everything adjusted properly let me tell you something this is a lot more work than pressing a button i guarantee you that all right folks that's all for now i appreciate you guys stopping by my channel don't forget to like share and subscribe and if you'd like to be notified whenever i release a new video don't forget to click that little bell down below you guys take it easy we'll see you around the shop